So over the past few years, I've kind of made a full 180 when it comes to my opinion on physical versus digital media purchasing. And something I saw from Sony recently pretty much solidified the fact that when it comes to TV shows and games, if I'm going to buy it to keep it, I'm gonna buy it physically. And today I wanna to talk about that because I'm sure this video is gonna spark quite a few conversations. So let's dive in. Now, just to clarify, I'm specifically talking about purchasing a TV show, a game, or a movie digitally. I'm not talking about streaming like Game Pass or Apple Music or Crunchyroll, because when you're streaming something and you're paying for that streaming service, it's kind of understood that you're paying for access to a curated service and you're not specifically paying for the access to one source file for one movie, TV show, or game. Streaming is access to a very large quantity of things that may be added or removed, and you don't really have a say in what gets added or removed, you're just paying for access to that. You should always have access to what you digitally purchase if it's specifically a movie, TV show, or game. But Sony had a different approach to that recently. Here's what I'm talking about. This is a letter that Sony recently sent out to any users who recently purchased TV shows through Sony's digital store that were licensed by Discovery. There was a licensing dispute with Discovery and Sony, and so Sony can no longer sell these Discovery programs. But that also means that these users who purchased, spent real world money to purchase these shows, and there's a list of the shows in that letter, they no longer have access to those shows, period. You spent money on it, God knows how much, and now you can't get to it anymore. You can't own it, you can't download it because, well, Sony can't have it and neither can you. Now, I'm sure some people are gonna to try to defend this by saying it's a licensing thing, it's not specifically Sony's fault or maybe it's all Discovery's fault. I don't know who started it. I don't know if Sony started the dispute, Discovery did, or if they just both couldn't find some common ground to keep the licensing good. I don't know that much. But what I do know is that if somebody spent physical, real-world money to purchase something digitally that they want to have access to, you should, if they can't get access to it anymore, give them their money back. Because if you just take the money and don't give them anything in return, that is stealing. Or you should give them a window of time wherein they can download the file that they purchased to put on whatever device they want and keep it before you remove it from your store. That's how that should work. You should either let them download it, even though it's going away, so that they can keep it. And if they miss that time window, that's their fault. But give them a window to download it so they can keep it because they bought it, or give them their money back. That's it. Don't keep the money and take away access and give them nothing. It's when I see stuff like this from big companies that I start to question my hardline stance against piracy. I'm not saying you should go pirating content, but when a company straight up steals your money, and gives you nothing in return, it makes my hardline position against piracy very difficult to justify, at least when it comes to certain companies. And to be fair, Sony's not the only company doing things with digital purchases that really shouldn't be done because you own the content already. Nintendo, for example, requires an online connection to be able to play games you purchase digitally from them. So if you wanna play Tears of the Kingdom on the go and you don't have Wi-Fi and you purchase it digitally, too bad, you can't play it because it can't verify that it's online and nobody else is playing it on another console. But if you have a physical copy and you plop it into the console and start playing, it just works because the physical copy is there, you own it, and that's it. If it's digital, I mean, you have access, but you don't technically own it 100%. That's the problem. And of course, by talking about Sony and Nintendo in one video together, I have now talked about two of the biggest anti-consumer companies on the market right now when it comes to digital purchases. I mean, hell, Sony's getting sued right now for being a monopoly when it comes to digital purchases through their shop. Oh boy. Now, for me personally, my approach to digital versus physical purchasing varies from content to content. For games, if you would have asked me a few years ago what I prefer, I would have said all digital. I bought the all digital version of the PS5. Most of the games that I had purchased up till recently on the Switch and the Xbox have been digital copies, but the more I realized that buying a physical copy just means you're getting a disc that still needs to download half the game, it really doesn't feel like I'm getting much in either regard. And when it comes to PC gaming, it's pretty much just all digital at this point. But the nice thing with Steam is that 
I can just have the files. And if I'm okay with not getting updates, I can take the whole thing offline and still play it. So in terms of gaming, I'm kind of in the middle. If I can get a physical copy that has the whole game on it, I'll do it. I will do that for the Switch. I will do that for the Xbox. I'm kind of stuck with all digital for the PS5 for now, but I mean, that is what it is. The point is that when it comes to gaming for me, if I can buy a physical copy of something and keep it and not have to worry about it being not mine in the foreseeable future, I'm gonna buy it physically with the exception of something like Game Pass, because like I said, I understand that games or whatever media I'm paying for access to will get cycled out in a service. But if I wanna buy the game and keep it because I know it's gonna be something I'll play over and over and over again, if I can get it physically, I will. It just sucks that half the game has to be downloaded anyway, but I digress. When it comes to music, I just stream it because, well, I fully accept the fact that they're gonna cycle music out, but I also like having any song that I want to listen to at the tip of my fingers. I've been through the iPod days, I've had hundreds of CDs before, and I've digitized all of them just to have them on my device of choice or whatever, but I'll stream it if I can have access to it at the tip of my fingers. And if the song goes away, again, I understand that I'm paying for a service that will allow me to have access to a pre-curated library. If I really want to keep the song, I'll purchase it though, and I'll probably buy the whole CD. Movies and TV shows though are the one thing where I will only ever buy physical, which is partly why it kills me that Best Buy is getting rid of all of their physical media within the next year. Yeah, that really sucks. But I did something that I've never done before because I've been too kind of terrified to actually know, but I went and counted all of the Blu-rays and DVDs that I purchased just for the sake of this video. <laughs> Between TV shows, movies, and anime, I have over 400 Blu-rays and DVDs, and I've digitized all of them, filling, or almost filling, a 14 terabyte hard drive. But I rip them because I want to be able to digitally access them. But I buy the physical copies because I want to always have access to them. A perfect example. Ghost Stories. I have all five of the original DVDs from Ghost Stories, one of the worst animes with one of the funniest best dubs ever. And when they came out with the Blu-ray version of that, I bought that as well. Because with jokes like this... Think of a big black man chasing you! <laughs> well, he's not racist. I guess not. He's only 0.2 seconds faster. It's only a matter of time until not just people watching it get offended, but somebody who is directly involved with the production or the distribution of it gets offended and takes it down from wherever it's being streamed or digitally purchased. So having the physical copies of those in both forms, that makes sure that I can always have access to it. All right, I know I'm getting a little ranty, but let me get back on script here and say that the point that I'm trying to make when it comes to digital versus physical media purchasing is that if you prefer to buy things digitally to save space or whatever, that's fine. But with the way things are going now, you pretty much just have to accept the fact that if you're gonna do that, it's not yours. You are exchanging money for hopefully permanent, but most likely temporary access to a source file that the company you purchased it from may not always have access to. And when they lose access, you lose access. And because these big companies see you as a statistic and not as a person who spent money to purchase a product, they're not gonna give you that money back when they take away access. They're just gonna say, sorry, anyway, go buy something else. As much of a fan of digital purchasing as I was back when it first became popular, as I've watched it devolve over the years, the more I've realized that if you want to be able to listen to, watch, or play something that you genuinely care about for as long as possible, the best way to do that is to buy it physically. Because at the end of the day, you can always pull out a Blu-ray or a CD, drop it into a player, and listen to it or watch it, and you don't have to wait for a license to verify and hope that it's still on a server somewhere to pull it down to play. You will have it right there. And you can digitize them, which is a beautiful thing that I love and will continue to do for as long as possible. But either way, that's been my little rant against digital purchasing. It's just gotten worse over the years to the point now where companies are removing access that people paid for and not giving them their money back. That, in my opinion, is just ridiculous. But I wanna know your opinion. So 
leave it in the comment section down below. And if you like content like this, definitely make sure to like it. And if you want to see more of it, make sure to subscribe because I have a ton of content planned and I can't wait to see you all there. Until then, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.